Welcome back. Today we are going to go over some common abbreviations and terminology, including the different members of the healthcare team. So in this section, we will identify some common abbreviations and terminology, and the common ones are found on page 162 of your Nurse Aid Guidelines book. We will also add some additional abbreviations and terminology, and these abbreviations and terminology will be used throughout the course, and then you also see them used whenever you're um, practicing as a CNA. So keep in mind that some facilities may not have the same abbreviations or terminology list that's approved, so just go with whatever your facility allows. I know that some facilities um, actually don't allow any abbreviations, so they may let you use the terminology, but they won't let you use any abbreviations. So just whatever it is that's your facility policy, go with that. So some different timed abbreviations, there's AC, which is before meals, PC, which is after meals, BID, which is twice a day, TID, which is three times a day, QID is four times a day, AM is morning, PM is afternoon or evening, and Q by itself means every. Now you can add Q to other abbreviations um, and we'll see uh, some of those on our abbreviations that are not recommended. So some different resident activities or treatment codes or um, abbreviations. We have ADL, which is activities of daily living. That's all of your things that we've been discussing throughout, um, throughout the course already. Bathing, dressing, grooming, eating, all those things are ADLs. Ad lib means as desired. So on a care plan, you may see that someone is up ad lib. That just means they can get up and move around whenever they want. They don't need any help. They don't need to call you. PRN means as needed. So they may have on the care plan, say somebody's diabetic and they can have snacks PRN. So whenever they're feeling a little shaky, feeling like they need to eat something, they can have a snack PRN. Am AMB is for ambulate or ambulatory. This means they can walk. So they may still need help, but it means that they are able to walk. Now, when we get to our mobility chapter, we will explain the difference between ambulate and being mobile because they are two different things. AMT means amount. BM means bowel movement. That one you will see a lot. Be very familiar with that term. C slash O means complains of. So you may see someone that complains of a headache. DC means discontinue. C means with. Now you may also see this one with a line over the C. Also, S meaning without, and you may also see that one with a line over the S. X means times. NPO is nothing by mouth. Now, a lot of times with this one, NPO, you will see this for people that are getting ready to go to surgery. So they might be NPO after midnight, so nothing by mouth after midnight. But NPO means nothing by mouth. So PO means by mouth. ROM is range of motion. This is how well people are able to move their joints. AROM means active range of motion, so they can move their joints themselves. They do not need help. PROM means passive range of motion. That means you have to perform the range of motion for them. WC is a wheelchair. And BP means blood pressure, and we will teach you how to do blood pressures in this course. Some other terms are TPR, temperature, pulse, respiration. VS meaning vital signs, that includes temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. It also includes getting an oxygen reading and checking people's pain level. AX means axillary, and that is under the arm or in the armpit. Now this will become important whenever we start talking about vital signs in Unit 12 because you can actually take a temperature under the arm if someone is not able to do one in the mouth. F, capital F, stands for Fahrenheit temperature. HT is for height. WT for weight. O2 is for oxygen. H2O for water. I and O 
intake and output. This one will be very, very uh, frequently used throughout the course and very, very important in your practice. IV means intravenous. This is where they have um, a needle or a plastic catheter in their vein to receive hydration or medications um, into their vein. OZ means ounce. ML means milliliter. NA is sodium. PT is physical therapist or physical therapy. OT, occupational therapist or occupational therapy. ST, SLP, this is a speech, speech therapist or speech language pathologist. Now I'd like to take just a minute to talk about the different therapies. So PT or physical therapy, these are gonna be the people that are gonna help a resident if they are weak. So say they've been in the hospital, they've had pneumonia, they get to your facility, they're pretty weak, can't get out of bed by themselves. They really can't walk very well. So they will work with PT to help get their strength back, work on their balance, work on their distance, work on their endurance. So say your resident also is having trouble managing their clothing. They can't get their pants down or back up whenever they go to the bathroom or they can put their shirt on but can't button the buttons. That's something that occupational therapy can work on. So OT will work on all of the things, all the ADLs um, that are kind of the basic grooming, things like that. ST or SLP, these are the people that are going to not only work on your speech, so if you have that aphasia, um, or dysphagia from a stroke if you're having difficulty um, speaking or can't speak at all. Um, also, if you have um, cognitive trouble, if you can't remember things or you're having difficulty with that, they can work on that. They can also work on swallowing, which is another common pro problem after you've had a stroke, is swallowing. So they can work on a lot of different things. Um, and one reason why you might refer somebody to a speech therapist is say they have trouble um, with drinking water and you think that they're choking. They kind of cough whenever they're drinking. They may need to be referred to a speech language pathologist or speech therapist to see if they need a modified diet. BSC means bedside commode. Now this is a portable toilet. So this is a toilet that can sit next to the bedside where people can um, use it and they don't have to go all the way into the bathroom. So people that require um, extensive lifts that can't fit into the bathroom or if they just really can't make it that far, a bedside commode might be a good idea for them. Just remember to keep those clean because if they're sitting right next to the bedside and they're kind of stinky, that's not good for the resident. Another term is WNL, which means within normal limits. So this is one that we'll kind of use when we talk about vital signs because there is a normal limit for blood pressures, what they should be normal limit for temperatures, what they should be, respirations, and so on and so forth. Our last section of residence activities or treatments include ABD for abdomen, PT meaning patient, HOB meaning head of bed, OOB meaning out of bed or out of building, and TX for treatment. So some diagnostic terms to become familiar with, these are some different medical diagnoses and um, different tests that you can do to check for medical conditions. CA means cancer, um, CHF means congestive heart failure, and this is where the heart is not pumping blood effectively, and we'll talk more about that in Unit 15. There is a term SOB, this is a short of breath. That one is not used quite as commonly anymore because um, you can also take it for side of bed, um, the more commonly term, used term now is SOA for short of air. Um, you also have GI for gastrointestinal, GU for genitourinary, DX for diagnosis, DM for diabetes mellitus, CVA is a cerebrovascular accident or stroke, MI means myocardial infarction or heart attack, HOA 
H-O-H means hard of hearing. F-X is fracture. U-T-I means urinary tract infection. And become familiar with that because you'll see that one a lot whenever you're working. Um, U-A is a urinalysis. And this is a test of the urine to see what's going on with the person, whether it's a U-T-I or something else going on. H-A means a headache. And COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. And that's another term for kind of an umbrella term of chronic bronchitis and emphysema um, that we'll talk about more when we get to chapter 15. There's also some abbreviations that are not recommended for use anymore. Um, includes HS for bedtime, U for unit, CC for cubic centimeter, QD for every day and QOD for every other day. These when written out can easily look like other things. So it's just best not to use these anymore um, if you can help it. So when we think about the members of the healthcare team, we kind of will think of them in terms of how they relate back to the care plan and what we're gonna do for the resident. So the CNA, and that's you, Certified nurse aide will provide information about how the resident performs their ADLs and other tasks. The CMA provides information about the medications and treatments. The PNA, this is a paid nutrition assistant. Their job is to feed the resident and document how well the resident eats and how well they're able to feed themselves. The RA is a restorative aide. This person will provide information about how the resident is able to meet his or her restorative goals. We'll talk about restorative um, much later in the course, but restorative basically is the person is trying to not decline anymore. So they put in a restorative program um, to make sure that the person maintains their level of wellness. They're not going to get any better, but we're trying to make sure they don't get worse. So the LPN or the licensed practical nurse, this is a person that's going to typically be a charge nurse and they will provide nursing information for the care plan and oversee the unlicensed staff such as the CMA, CNA, paid nutrition aid and the restorative aid. Then you have the RN, this is a registered nurse. They're the ones that oversee the care plan and supervise all of the nursing staff. Some other members of the healthcare team include the MDS coordinator, this person ensures that the care plan meets the regulatory and reimbursement guidelines. The RD or registered dietitian, they develop the dietary plan. And the CDM is the person that oversees how the resident responds to their diet and will help develop the menus. The AD is the activity director. This person provides information about how the resident participates in activities. The LSW or SSD, this is a licensed social worker or social service designee. They help provide information about the resident's discharge plan and some resources regarding the discharge plan. They can also help with different things um, such as helping a person put a DNR in place, working on advanced directives, kind of dealing with family or um, other social dynamics as well, even if somebody doesn't have a discharge plan in place. So the MD or DO, this is the doctor or the physician. So they provide medical oversight for the resident and decide what medical treatments or interventions need to be done for the resident's care. And they work with ARNPs or PAs. Those are the advanced registered nurse practitioners or the physician assistant. Um, the great thing about this is you can have one doctor that's responsible for multiple people, but the doctor can oversee multiple ARMPs or PAs, so then even more residents can be taken care of um, and not have a shortage of medical providers for them. So then there's a chaplain, and this person will work with the resident to identify and nurture some spiritual and emotional needs. Chaplains can work for anybody, not just those that have religious or spiritual preferences. So this completes um, our abbreviations, terminology, and members of the healthcare team. There will be a quiz after this, so please refer back to this. And if you want to, you know, look over this one again and write down some of the terms in your book, that would be great. Please contact your instructors if you have any questions. Thank you very much.